by transcription. The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> <laughs> And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, it's a warm, lazy spring day in the little town of Melrose Springs, the kind of a day when everything moves slowly. And Honest Harold Hemp is moving rather slowly himself, as he ambles home from work a little earlier than usual. In fact, several hours earlier. <sighs> well, there's no use staying down at the radio station any longer. I'm too sleepy to get any work done. <sighs> I can't nap in my office. I keep sliding out of that posture chair. Kind of nice to stretch out on the old horsehair sofa in the living room. Mother! I'm home! Mother! Oh, I guess she's downtown. Well, it'll be nice and quiet, and I'll be able to... Hi, Al. Oop. Oh, hello, Marvin. Home from school already? Yeah, we got out early. Our history teacher is a cold in the head. Oh, well, that's nice. I mean, uh, that's too bad. You're missing a class like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Marvin, why don't you go outside and play? Okay. Yeah, see you later. Uh, little Marvin. Sure glad he came to live with us. Nice having a boy around the house. Oop. Marvin, how many times have I told you not to slap? Oh, well. Uh, that old horsehair sofa looks mighty comfortable. I'll just get him. Oh! Mm! Why does Marvin have to leave his roller skates right in the middle of the room? Oh, well. I'll just stretch out here. Oh, uh, uh. Oop. Better take my hat off. <laughs> Loosen my vest. Take off my moose button. Hits me in the sternum. <laughs> uh, uh, it's gonna be nice to take a snooze. What's that? Ooh, for heaven's sake. Marvin's bouncing a ball against the house. Eef. Zoof. Zoink. <laughs> Will you please stop that before you shake the house down? Ah, oh, gee, I can't do anything. Well, can't you find something to do that's a little more quiet? Um, why don't you go out on the sidewalk and uh, count the ants? Okay, I'll stop, Harold. Yeah, that's a good boy. <laughs> I didn't have that much energy when I was a boy. Well, we didn't have vitamins in those days. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sleepy. Marvin, I thought I told you... What, Harold? Oh, hello, Mother. Hello, Harold. Oh, you're lying down. Yeah. Have you had a nice rest? Oh, yeah. I'm so glad you came home early today. You are? This would be a wonderful time for you to fix that hole in the garage. Hole in the garage? Yes. Remember when you rammed the Essex into the back wall? Yeah, oh, yeah. At the time my foot slipped off the brake, I was wearing my new Oxfords with plastic soles. <laughs> and you bought the lumber the next day. Mm. You said you were going to put in a whole new back wall. That lumber's been out in the backyard for four months, Harold. Four months? Well, February was a short month, Mother. <laughs> Harold. Uh, all right, Mother. I guess I should get that job done. I'll go out right now and sort of uh, survey the situation. All right, son. I'll be giving out your overalls. I'll shake the mothballs out of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, my osh gosh bagosh overalls bagosh. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Uh, guess I'm trapped. Oh, well, has to be done sometime. Oh, whistle while you work. Guess I gotta go to work. Let's see. Lumber's piled up against the garage under that tarp. Hey, pile looks awfully small. Let's see under here. Oop, most of it's gone. It was here yesterday. Somebody took it last night. Must be a gang of lumber thieves in town. By George, you're not gonna get away with it. 
I'm going in and call Pete the Marshal right now. Somebody's going to walk the plank for this. Hmm. My plank, too. <laughs> Well, now, let's go over this again, Harold. You come out here in the backyard and found that the lumber was gone. That's right, Pete. All right, now, let's reconstruct the crime. We'll go about this thing just like the FBI. and I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, come on, Pete. Keep your watch fob on, boy. Uh, Let me see here. Now, whoever took that lumber must have left footprints. Mm -hmm. Let's just look around here. Hey, what's this? What? Harold, that lumber thief is just as good as in jail right now. He is? Sure. All we got to do is find a man with three toes. Three toes? Yep. You see them footprints? Pete, those are chicken tracks. <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of funny about them feathers. <laughs> uh, you've got a feather brain, too. Well, I guess that's why I'm so light-headed. <laughs> oh, what a corny cop. When did you leave Max Sennett? <laughs> Pete, will you please... Oh, here comes Doc. Hello, Harry. Here comes Max Sennett now. Hello, Doc. Howdy, Doc. Oh, hello, Pete. Oh, oh, oh. oh I see you brought your Airedale. Oh, yes, oh. I... Uh... Well, tell him to get out of my geraniums. Oh. Here, Torrance. Come on, Torrance. Oh, oh. Uh, Torrance is here to help you, Harry. What? Well, I heard about your lumber being stolen. I thought maybe you could use Torrance as a bloodhound. Bloodhound? See, that's a good idea, Doc. Maybe he can track down the criminals. That dog couldn't track down a bone in a butcher shop. Oh, now, Harry, you've gone and hurt his feelings. Uh. Oh. <laughs> he didn't mean it, Torrance, boy. Look, fellas, I'll buy some more lumber. Let's just forget the whole thing. Oh, oh. Harry, look at Torrance. What? Why, he's looking right at that pile of lumber. He is? Maybe he's picked up the same. Oh, oh. Where's he going, Doc? Behind the garage. I do declare he's on the trail already. That dog is real smart. Uh-oh. He's found something behind there. Huh? <laughs> I'll say he has a neighbor's cat. Some blood. <laughs> well, after all, this is his first case, Harold. Uh, say, I, I don't suppose that cat stole that lumber. Pete. <laughs> say... What's this piece of paper? Huh? Right here on this board. Let me see it, Doc. It's got a skull and crossbones onto it. And there's a note. What does it say, Pete? Beware. Don't try to follow us or you'll be sorry. <laughs> Signed, the Skeleton Gang. The Skeleton Gang? Yeah, I never heard of them before. Must be an outfit from Charlieville. Yeah. Pete, let me see that note. Oh, my goodness. It's from a bunch of kids. Look at this. They spelled skeleton with two Ks. And it's got an arithmetic test on the back. Oh, kids, huh? Certainly. Well, boys, you'll be boys. Yeah, I just hope the skeleton gang comes back tonight for the rest of that lumber. What? I'll be out there waiting for them. Those kids need to be taught a lesson. Oh, now, Harold, it was just a prank. Well, I don't want them playing pranks with my pranks. <laughs> oh, now, Harold. Pete, they need to be disciplined for their own good. Oh, we were all boys once. Why, when I was a kid, we had a gang... We called it the Creepy Six. Uh, I'll bet you were the head creep. <laughs> oh, <hell>. Only kidding, Doc. <laughs> Go home, fellas. Hmm. Backyard sure looks different at night. Kind of dark out here, all by myself. Pete said he was coming. Where is he? <sighs> Just hope that skeleton gang does come back tonight. I'll be ready for him. Think I'll hide behind the elm tree. Boo! No! <laughs> Pete! I'm the head of the skeleton gang, boy. <laughs> Pete, will you cut the clowning? Those kids might be right around here. Okay. Hey. Your house is all dark. Where at is everybody? Well, Mother's at a club meeting and Marvin's asleep. Oh. Now, Pete, I'll stay here behind the tree. You go over and hide behind the garage. We'll surround them. I got you, boy. If you see him coming, give me a signal. Whistle. I got you, boy. Well, I get my hands on those kids. They'll really get a talking to. I'll speak to their parents, too. If they kept an eye on their children, they wouldn't be running around like this 
filching lumber. Uh oh, they must be coming. Yeah, there they are. They don't look very big. I guess Pete and I can handle them all right. <laughs> Certainly don't waste any time. Why doesn't Pete do something? Wonder if I can sneak up on him. Here's where I get them. I got you, son. I got the big one, huh? I guess he's the leader. Pete, you lifted. You got me. Oh, <laughs> You know, I thought he was kind of young to have a mustache. Come on, fellas. Scram. They're getting away, Come Peter. On. I'll go right after him, boy. You hurry up. I, I got one of them, Harold. Good. Bring him back here. Yeah. Or to let this one go, Harold. What? We'll do no such thing. This boy's parents are going to get a real lecture when I find out who he belongs to. I know who he belongs to, Harold. Who, Pete? You, boy. It's Marvin. <laughs> huh? Marvin? Hi, Harold. Hi. He. <laughs> We will return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. Just a little later tonight, Bing Crosby will be celebrating his birthday with two old cronies, Bert Wheeler and Walter O'Keefe, as Bing's guests. Also on CBS tonight, Joe Lewis will be taking on his latest opponent, Emilio Agramati. We'll be bringing you Bing's birthday broadcast and the Joe Lewis Emilio Agramati fight on most of these same CBS stations. And now, back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, we find Honest Harold in rather a bad humor this Saturday morning. Yeah. Last night, he caught one of the members of the juvenile skeleton gang who have been appropriating his lumber. And it turned out to be Marvin, the little boy who has been living with Harold. Yeah, what a sneaky thing for Marvin to do. I'm going to have a talk with that boy, and right now. Come in. Hello, Marvin. Hello. Marvin, I've decided to give you one more opportunity. Are you going to tell me who the other boys were last night? I can't tell you, Hal. It's the coat of the skeleton gang. Oh, my goodness. Well, if it's not asking too much, can you tell me where my lumber is? No, I can't. It's the coat of the skeleton gang. Uh... We made a solemn promise not to tell on each other. By candlelight. Where'd you get the candle? I can't tell. It's the coat of the skeleton gang. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Marvin, I'm doing this for your own good. And for good of the other boys, too. Uh, you don't want them to turn out to be gangsters, do you? No, sir. Well, then are you going to tell me who they are? I can't. Yeah, it's the, it's code, the code of the, of the skeleton, skeleton gang. gang. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to ask you anymore. If you don't care about the future of these boys, I should worry. If you don't want to tell me, you don't have to. All right, I won't. Yes, you will. <laughs> you better think this over, young man. I'll be back in a little while. Code of the skeleton gang. We don't have anything like that in the moose. <laughs> uh, guess I might as well drive downtown and get some more lumber. Suppose I ought to punish Marvin. Well, I'll have him clean up this backyard one of these days. What's this? Looks like a piece of paper sticking out of this hole in the elm tree. Oh, my goodness. A note from the skeleton gang. Let's see. Marvin... Meet us at our new secret hiding place right away. See secret map below. Hmm. Go out to the end of Mulberry Street. Cut across Grover's Pasture. Watch out for bull. Uh. <laughs> well, this shouldn't be too hard to find. A skeleton gang is going to have a new member this morning. Skinny Hemp. <laughs> guess this is Grover's pasture. Map says I cut through here. Didn't say anything about this barbed wire fence, though. Guess I can crawl through it. Just pull this wire up. 
Get one leg through. Now. <laughs> Got me right in the wallet. <laughs> Darn barbed wire. Let go of me. There. Ah, I'll just cut across here. Ooh. Wow. Hello, bossy. I mean, Billy. <laughs> Uh, guess I shouldn't have worn this red necktie. <laughs> uh, little boo, this isn't really a red necktie. It's maroon. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe he's colorblind. They say a bull won't bother you if you show him you're not afraid. Uh, I'll just walk slowly. <laughs> Heck, I will. I'm gonna run. <laughs> <sighs> Made it. That bull wasn't so fast. <sighs> oh, let's see what's next on this map. Climb down south bank of Rock Quarry. Hmm. Looks kind of steep. Well, here goes. Uh, uh, well, got down here all right. Oh, now what do I do? See here. <sighs> Climb up. North Bank of Rock Quarry. Why don't they make up their minds? <sighs> what a workout. A race with Ferdinand the Bull up and down the Rock Quarry. Those kids certainly do things the hard way. Oh, that must be their meeting place. A little shack there. <laughs> sure flimsy looking. Imagine those kids building a clubhouse way up. Oop, they build it with my lumber. <laughs> They've got them. All right, quiet, Skeeter. Yeah, they're inside there. Just put my ear to this knot hole. The meeting of the skeleton gang will now come to order. Skeeter, did you put that note in the tree for Marvin? Yeah, but I think old Stuffy Bridges is making him stand in there. <laughs> well, we'll start with the meeting anyhow. We'll begin with the ritual. It, what's this? Halakazam. Halakazoo. Biff, boom, bam. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Sounds like the owl gang. <laughs> <laughs> rickety, tick, rickety, tick, rick, tick, two. We will always be loyal to you. The, the skeleton, skeleton gang. gang. Oh, brother, wonder who writes their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, Skeeter, we never tell any of our secrets. No. It's the code of the skeleton gang. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> it wasn't that funny last night, Skeeter. Yeah. <laughs> the way we got away from old Pete the Marshal. He's sure a dimwit. <laughs> well, Pete is kind of a dimwit. <laughs> and that Mr. Hemp, he's got a hollow head. Oh? <laughs> You ever hear his radio program? It's trippy. <laughs> so is he. What a cornball. Yeah. <laughs> that does it. I'm going in there and <laughs> lost my balance. I'm going to fall. Kim and Nettie, look who fell in. It's Stuffy Bridges. Yeah. Now look here, you. <laughs> Come on, Skeeter. Let's beat it. Okay. Come back here, you little skeletons. Uh, uh. Oh, well, anyway, I got my lumber back. Ow, I don't remember buying that piece. <laughs> uh, so that's the skeleton gang. Chuck and Skeeter. Mm. I think my leg's broken. Well, I'm going to report them to Mr. Morton, the school principal, right now. He can have a talk with their parents. Oh, hello, Gloria. How's our little switchboard operator today? Oh, just fine. I... Why, Harold, hmm? look at your clothes. Did a house fall on you? No, I fell on the house. <laughs> what? Yeah, never mind, Gloria. Well, where have you been all morning? Hmm? I was with the skeleton gang. What's that, a reducing club? Well, I lost a little weight getting there. I'm thinking of joining a reducing class, Harold. Oh, that's good. It's called the Pound of the Month Club. <laughs> well, isn't that cute? <laughs> Well, see you later. Where are you going, Harold? I can't tell you, Gloria. It's the code of the skeleton gang. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Morton. Oh, hello, Mr. Hamp. Mr. Morton, since you're the principal of this school, 
there's something I think you ought to know. Yes? I, uh, I just wanted to talk to you about a few of the boys here. They've sort of banded together, and they've been taking lumber out of my backyard. Now, it's not the lumber, you understand, but I think these boys ought to be straightened out for their own good. Uh, well, uh... It's, uh, only fair for me to tell you that my Marvin is one of them. And the others are... I, uh, I think I know who they are, Mr. Hemp. You mean the, uh, skeleton gang. Oh, are you a member, too? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> the other two members of the gang are in the next office. Yeah. You mean Chuck and Skeeter? Oh, you caught him, eh? No, no, they came here to see me. Why? Uh? Yes, they told me about uh, taking your lumber. They said they'd been thinking it over, and they didn't think it was fair for Marvin to take the blame alone. You mean they came and told you? Yes, yes, they said it was all for one and one for all. That's the code of the skeleton gang. Oh, yes, I've heard of that. <laughs> Mr. Hemp, when I was a boy, I, I was quite a bit like Chuck and Skeeter. Oh, you were? Yes. My parents didn't have a lot of money either. They worked hard, didn't have much time to look after me. When I was about their age, I drifted into a gang. And we started taking little things at first, then little bigger things. First thing we knew, we were headed for serious trouble. But then something happened that changed our whole lives. Uh -huh. What was that? Well, there was a man there who understood boys and their problems, and he organized a boys' club, one of the boys' clubs of America. He got the people in town to build a big clubhouse where the youngsters could get together and play and work, have their energies guided into healthy channels. Huh? I see. He knew that every boy is like a young tree. He can either become twisted, or he can grow up straight and strong. It all depends on how you help him get started. Oh, yes. Well, I'll call the boys in now. Skeeter? Chuck? Yes, sir? I, uh, I think you boys have met Mr. Hemp. Oh, yeah. Hello, Stuffy Britches. Uh, Mr. Hemp. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Hemp. Hello, boys. <laughs> Mr. Hemp, we're sorry about that lumber. Yeah, sorry. Well, that's all right. I guess all boys have to have a clubhouse. Yeah. Well, we did have one till you fell on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, fellas, since I sort of wrecked your little place, I guess it's up to me to see that you get another one, huh? How would you boys like to have a great big clubhouse, maybe with a gym and a wood shop and a lot of games? A place where you could go after school and Saturdays and have lots of fun. Gosh, Mr. Hemp, that would be wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, but how are you going to build this clubhouse, Mr. Hemp? Uh, you just leave that to me. You can count on my help, Mr. Hemp. You've helped already, Mr. Morton. And boys, you're going to get that clubhouse. You just listen in to my radio program tomorrow morning. If it isn't too drippy. <laughs> <laughs> And so, radio listeners of Melrose Springs, I know you'll all want to help build a real club for the boys of this town. The Boys Club of America will do their part, so won't you please do yours? I can't think of any greater satisfaction than to bring happiness to the heart of a boy. What is a boy? As some wonderful writer once wrote, Between the innocence of babyhood and the dignity of manhood, we find a delightful creature called a boy. Boys come in assorted sizes, weights, and colors. But all boys have the same creed, to enjoy every second of every minute of every hour of every day and to protest with noise their only weapon when their last minute is finished and the adult males pack them off to bed at night. Boys are found everywhere, on top, underneath, inside of, climbing on, swinging from, running around, or jumping to. Mothers love them, little girls hate them. Older sisters and brothers tolerate them, adults ignore them and heaven protects them. A boy is truth with dirt on its face, beauty with a cut on its finger, wisdom with bubble gum in its hair, and the hope of the future with a frog in its pocket. He likes ice cream, knives, saws, Christmas comic books, the boy across the street, woods, water in its natural habitat, Large animals, dad, trains, Saturday mornings, and fire engines. He's not much for Sunday school, company, schools, books without pictures, music lessons, neckties, barbers, girls, overcoats, adults, or bedtime. 
Nobody else is so early to rise or so late to supper. Nobody else gets so much fun out of trees, dogs, and breezes. Nobody else can cram into one pocket a rusty knife, a half-eaten apple, three feet of string, an empty bull durham sack, two gumdrops, six cents, a slingshot, a chunk of unknown substance, and a genuine supersonic code ring with a secret compartment. A boy is a magical creature. You can lock him out of your workshop, but you can't lock him out of your heart. You can get him out of your study, but you can't get him out of your mind. You might as well give up. He's your captor, your jailer, your boss, and your master. A freckle-faced, pint-sized, cat-chasing bundle of noise. But when you come home at night, with only the shattered pieces of your hopes and dreams. He can mend them like new with the two magic words, Hi, Dad. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a distinguished guest with us this evening, Mr. Aaron H. Ferringer, Western Regional Director of the Boys Clubs of America. Mr. Ferringer. Thank you, Mr. Lamond. I'm here tonight to present the first annual Golden Man and Boy Award to Harold Perry. The award consists of a statuette of a man standing behind a typical Boys Club boy. This signifies the philosophy of the Boys Clubs of America. And behind each boy member stands a man, an understanding Boys Club leader helping to prepare that Boys Club boy for a greater future citizenship. Mr. Perry, I would like to read one significant paragraph from the citation that goes with your award. For your outstanding transcribed radio program, which during National Boys Club Week in 1950, was programmed on over 1,100 local radio stations throughout the country. And for your continued interest throughout the years in the Boys Club movement, and for tonight's excellent program, this Boys Club of America First Annual Public Service Award is presented for interpreting and promoting the Boys Club movement. Mr. Perry, I'm happy to present this award to you. Thank you, Mr. Ferringer. It's a great honor, a beautiful award, and I'm very glad that I was able to assist in such a worthy cause. Good night, folks. <laughs> You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Parley Bear, Butch Cavell, Bob Bailey, Jeffrey Silver, Sammy Ogg, David Light, and featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as Old Doc Yak Yak. Norman MacDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson. Suspense. Radio's outstanding theater of thrills has some great stars lined up for you in this month of May. Tomorrow night, Rosalind Russell headlines Suspense on CBS. In succeeding weeks, Phil Harris and Alice Faye, Charles Boyer, Dick Powell, and Jeff Chandler will be your stars. Don't miss a Thursday date with Suspense. It's heard on most of these same CBS stations. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately. The Harold Perry Show was transcribed in Hollywood. Bob Lamont speaking. <laughs> this is CBS, where you thrill to suspense on Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.